All right, so when we talk about full suspension bikes, for the most part, you have two options, aluminum and carbon. But over the last handful of years, we've seen an uptick in brands making steel fullies, including this thing right here, the Reeb SST, which was announced late last year, and man, is this thing a blast. Let's jump into it. Before we dive into the review, I just want to mention that this video is supported in part by Terrabelle Tires. Do you need more traction in your gravel tire? The Rutland has you covered. Its staggered, spaced out lugs dig into loose gravel, sand, mud, and dirt without feeling too sluggish. That means more trust in your tire when cornering and braking. The Rutland is available in both durable and light and supple casings, coming in a variety of sizes from 650B by 47 millimeters to 29 by 2.2 inches. So for more on the Rutland, make sure to hit this card right here, or you can also find a link below. After Dale, the founder of Oscar Blue's bike was stolen, he decided he didn't want to buy another bike made overseas. So he decided to do it himself all by hand here in the United States. Thus, Reeb was born in 2012 in the same barn Oscar Blues Brewery was started right in Lyons, Colorado. So, what's in the name? Well, yeah, Reeb is just beer spelled backwards. The SST stands for Steel Short Travel, Reeb's 120 millimeter rear travel bike built around a 130 to 150 millimeter fork with 29 by 2.5 inch tire clearance. Reeb says it bridges the gap between their playful and capable hardtails and their Steezel, their big travel bike built around 155 millimeters of rear travel. Like all Reeb's, Steel is the main ingredient. The SST is made from a 4130 chromoly tube set, but maybe more interesting than a full suspension bike is their use of 3D printed stainless steel small parts. Cumberland Additive of Texas supplies Reeb's hollow chainstay yoke, seat stay clevis, and rear dropouts for the SST. Reeb mentions that these parts offer a lighter and stiffer alternative to machine parts. And by using these technologies and welding in-house, Reeb mentions they can customize geometry for the customer, but also allow for surprisingly quick turnaround times for prototyping. So to say this is a run-of-the-mill steel bike manufacturer eh, is probably not very accurate. All right, so you will notice some gussets on top and below the top tube. This is where Reeb installs their aluminum rockers for their exclusive four bar uh, suspension system. The design uses a horse link concept, but with flex stays. So by adding uh, the flex stay, they can remove the rear pivot commonly found on a horse link pivot design. This keeps weight down and alleviates the need to service an extra pivot point on the bike. So the Boost Space SST comes in a variety of sizes from extra small to extra large. I'm five, nine and a half or 176 point five millimeters and I tested the medium and it was an excellent fit for me. The medium comes with a 460 millimeter reach and a 614.5 millimeter stack which definitely aligns with some of the longer travel bikes that I've pedaled in the medium category. And while it was not super upright, uh, it definitely never bothered me on big days. I've owned a few bigger travel bikes in the 140 millimeter rear travel range but I've never kept one very long as I've always struggled to ride an efficient enough one for all day or multi-day rides. The downside is that when I do crest that hill, uh, I typically get underbiked on the most demanding terrain. But this is where the SST shines, as it feels much bigger than a 120 rear, 140 front bike, in part to a few things, the 65.5 degree head tube angle and a 1,207.5 millimeter wheelbase. So the bike comes with 435 millimeter chainstays, nothing out of the ordinary there, uh, and nearly shares the same 436 millimeter chainstays they found on the 115 millimeter rear travel Rebel Ranger. But the front center is where the SST stands apart from other 120 millimeter offerings, coming with 773 millimeters from bottom bracket to front axle. So the frame comes with a very sloping top tube, so standover is certainly a non-issue for most. But because of that sloping top tube, the medium comes equipped with a 210 millimeter dropper. Yeah, that's, that's huge. The downside here is this minimal front triangle space. More on that soon. All right, so the bike remains extremely active with Reeb's suspension design. While it's not the fastest climber with its overall length and weight, 
coming in at 33 pounds, as you see here. But with the steeper 76 degree C tube angle, it actually helped me stay relatively balanced, allowing me to plow through some technical sections. And with the rear wheel keeping a grip over the chunder, I was actually really surprised that it could clean a lot of tricky, challenging sections of trail, even at relatively slow speeds. Only on the steepest climbing bits did I notice that I needed to lean over the bars and pedal out of the saddle to keep that front wheel grounded. There is also a little bit of a self-steering at slow speeds, and while that sounds somewhat negative, it actually helped me navigate tight switchbacks with ease despite the longer wheelbase, which was definitely a pleasant surprise. So as I mentioned, the SST, it loves to be active. So when the bike kind of finds some flat dirt roads or pavement or even some smooth single track, it's not all that excited about it. It will definitely get you from A to B, but with little enthusiasm. I often turn the climbing switch on the Cane Creek double barrel inline rear shock to just stay as efficient as possible. But the SST turns into a totally different beast when gravity is on its side. The SST was designed to go down. It seeks speed, and really it's incredibly stubborn that way. Speed brings out a stable, nimble, and kind of go-get-it attitude. When it came to larger hits or just letting off the brakes and letting the bike do its thing, the bike had a very playful and almost poppy characteristic to it. High-speed corners were effortless and it had no problems holding a line or eating up rock gardens. Simply put, the SST felt much bigger than a 120 millimeter bike. During my first week with the bike on descents, I did notice an occasional jarring compression after hitting my rear wheel on features such as large rocks or roots, suddenly pushing the rear end from side to side. I wondered if it was the steel nature as opposed to, I don't know, a carbon that dampens vibrations better, or perhaps coming from a split pivot bike, or just trying to dial in this Cane Creek rear shock. Whatever it was, it worked itself out, or I simply got used to it. Overall, the SST it rides like a dream. Uh, I certainly wouldn't use it to try to PR a climb, but don't be surprised if you end up cleaning a section of the trail that's been giving you fits for a while. And when it comes to descending, the bike truly encourages you to ride the trail and not the brakes, even through chunky, wet, dry, or loose trail. Reba offers the SST in various builds uh, with air or coil shocks. You can buy just the frame, you could buy the frame and fork, or a few kits including SRAM GX Eagle or the XO transmission as the bike is built around the UDH. So despite uh, this GX transmission on here which I was testing, um, my build actually came with SRAM XO Eagle driver. It also came with uh, Cane Creek's helm fork and Cane Creek's double barrel rear shock. Definitely took some time to dial in that rear shock, but I was delighted with how well it complemented the bike once I did. So the bike came with Industry 9 stem and wheels with a one by one hubs and carbon 30 millimeter hoops. And mounted to those were some Victoria Mazza tires, which offer excellent grip, uh, but definitely not the best rollers. The bike also came with a very easy to service one up V2 dropper and carbon handlebars, which I ended up swapping out because they were kind of cut down, I think to 770 I measured. So I ended up throwing a similar 800 millimeter bar on there. Finally, and maybe my favorite component on this bike is the TRP Trail Evo brakes. I'm super impressed with their stopping power and modulation. And with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear, I had no issues with stopping power. When we talk about ideal bike material for bike packing, it's hard to argue against steel. Heck, even Reeb sent this uh, media test bike with a small dent on their beefy down tube here, which is kind of a testament to what steel is made to do. And while the frame space and overall geometry might not seem like a go-to option for bike packing, it certainly works. So I strapped it up with some bags and recently went out on an overnighter. As I mentioned, the bike, it's not light, despite the flex day, 3D printed parts, and relatively high-end components. The overall weight of my loaded bike with everything and a few extras came out to 53 pounds. But the already grounded bike felt much more planted, giving me loads of confidence and grip. Uh, the higher trail certainly paired with a load on the front bars gave it a kind of funky feeling up front. But outside of that, it felt like any loaded bike, incredibly grounded and the weight definitely brought out some life out of the tube set. As far as bike packing provisions, aside from it being a rather durable frame, there are few on this bike. 
there are one set of bottle mounts inside the main triangle. And while this bike does not have brazons on the underneath side of the down tube, this is now a stock feature on the SST. The bike also comes with external routing, except for a internally routed dropper post. As far as some storage, I ended up using an Old Man Mountain Elkhorn rack and fit kit on this frame, which has definitely been my go-to for full suspension bikes, and it actually worked out really great for me. I also squeezed a Revelate Designs hopper uh, frame bag in the frame space, but my outer shell wedge did not fit, so this would be a great candidate for a custom frame bag. Overall, if you bike pack with the SST, you will definitely need to be a little creative with storage, but that's kind of what bike packing is all about in the first place. Now, because the bike performed so well for me, I really wouldn't change too much, but if I'm being picky, I would definitely raise that top tube from sloping so much so that I do have a little bit more front triangle space. I also wouldn't mind a shorter front center, uh, so steepen that head tube angle and shorten the reach a little bit. Fortunately, Reeb actually offers custom uh, head tube angles, axle to crown measurements, and reach lengths for a limited time, which is pretty neat. So I promised Reeb about a six week turnaround time, give or take, on this review, but I'll admit I was having way too much fun with it. I've had the SST since early June and I've had an absolute blast on this thing, pedaling it over 300 miles on bikepacking trips, six to seven hour high alpine single track rides and quick after work spins. If you're a fan of steel and love the hardtail platform but looking for full suspension option, the SST is just such a natural progression. You'll get the performance of a full suspension bike with the durability of a steel frame. Plus, the lines on the SST are so clean and beautiful, and it just simply offers much more than a standard 120 millimeter short travel trail bike. Now, the SST, well, yeah, it's not that cheap. It certainly falls in line with a high-end carbon fiber full suspension bike. The build I tested comes in at 8,500 USD, and the frame set starts at 3,995 USD and goes up from there. So what are your thoughts on the Reeb SST? Let me know in the comments section below. So if you like what you saw in this video and wanna see more like it, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you wanna support all the work we do here at bikepacking.com, including original routes and in-depth reviews like this one, consider becoming a member of the Bikepacking Collective. More information can be found in the top right corner or in the link below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, pedal further.